Hi friends, so a lot of people have been asking me if I can just go through the process of how you actually list a car on Turo for those of you that haven't done it yet. So I'm going to show you really quick. I'm logged into the um, my dashboard to actually my personal account. Um, one thing that I thought was really cool that actually I haven't really seen uh, before is that when you actually go to list your car, um, Turo shows you sort of this really cool calculator and I was just kind of playing around with it with some of my cars. So if you kind of want to get an idea of your earning potential, what they do is they take the market value of your car and you can kind of just toggle that and set it to whatever you need it to be. And then you can uh, take a look at, you know, how many days out of the month. By default, they have it at 15 days. And I think that's actually a pretty fair number if you do have your car available. And that'll give you an idea of how much you could earn per year. So if you're looking at different cars and, you know, you know their price ranges, this is a great little tool to kind of check out. Now, of course, this totally varies based on your settings and your offering and your pricing and how available your vehicle is. But, um, you know, I did it with some of my cars and I thought it was pretty close to what the earnings are so this is a pretty cool little tool so it's really easy once you create your account um, and you log in so I'm logged in right now you go to your upper um, menu bar up here and you go to vehicles and you're gonna see here that um, you'll see all the cars that I already have listed so here's sort of my fleet and what it looks like my existing vehicles now when you are ready to list a new car you'll just go right here where it says list your car and it's really easy. You only need a few key pieces of information. Now here it's going to say that you need a license plate number and photos of your car. Um, so where is your car located? That's important. Do you want people to be um, picking it up from your house, your work address, whatever is the most convenient, consistent place for you? That's the address that you want to put in here. Um, so for some people, what they do is actually put in the address to their closest airport. So if you live close to a major airport, that's always a good strategy as well if you're able to get the car to that airport. So just I'm going to give you guys an example here. I put One World Way. Usually for my cars, I have my home address or the airport, just kind of depending. And you can change that whenever you want on a daily basis if you want. It's totally up to you. So all this information is changeable. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put in the make and model and year of my car, transmission, automatic. I'm going to do this as if I'm listing a new Corvette. And then they just want to confirm that your car has never been branded or had a salvage title, which of course is important. Here they're going to ask you just some quick basic questions about the car's availability. Um, so the first one is how much advance notice do you need before a trip? And these are your options here. It ranges from an hour to a week. Um, so usually on my cars, I put an hour to three hours, uh, just depending on the car and where my car is at and things like that. Shortest possible trip. So what's the minimum that you're willing to accept? A lot of people have two days minim two day minimums, but I recommend when you're first getting started, if you really want to build up your profile and you really want to build up the reviews and you're looking at doing this sort of really seriously and building out a fleet of vehicles, then I would really just put um, open up the options as much as possible. So you don't want to be as you don't want to be too limited so that you can start getting those rentals in as much as possible. Um, but a lot of people for shortest trip, I've seen that they put two days for longest trip. Usually it's open unless you're actually using your car for other purposes and not just for Turo. Now here, a lot of people ask me this, do you have to have a license plate number? Uh, you do not. So when it comes to this part, you know, you can just type in dealer plates. Um, if you are thinking of buying a new car, you do not have to wait till your license plates come in the mail from the DMV. You can go ahead and list your car car right away um, even while you're waiting to get your plates and your registration and all, all that good stuff and then here you want to type in this is so important I cannot stress this enough you want to have a detailed 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 description people love details they want to know what your car is about um, and really from your description people get a really great idea of the type of host you are too how much information are you volunteering? How well do you want them to know about your car before they actually rent your car? For me, details is everything. All my descriptions are super long. I include as much information as I possibly can. And then also um, here you want to fill out every single box that is related to your car. Now this is also important because this actually goes into um, the filters that Turo offers when 
um, when they actually, when people are searching for the car on Turo and they can put in filters based on what they're looking for. So you really want to make sure you fill this out 100% true to what your car is because people will be looking for specific things. And then after the description, the or actually the description is the second most important thing, Photos is the number one most important thing. I'm just going to upload a random photo here so I can just finish off the process. You guys, when you list your car, you want to take the best photos that you possibly can. I believe you can upload up to 20 photos. Upload 20 photos. Take photos of every angle of your car, the interior of your car, your seats, um, if you have a digital display in your car, um, if your car comes with heated seats, you know, if it has an auxiliary drive, USB drive, all these little details people want to see. They want to see your back seat. They want to see your trunk. They want to see an angle from far away. They want to see close up. They want to see your rims. Details, details, details in your photos. The photos are the selling point to your listing. Literally, people will choose a car because of what the photos look like. So this is so important. If you can, upload all 20 photos. And if you watch my other video, you'll see that um, Tara will actually come out and do a free photo shoot for you. And then they also have a little guide here as well. So once you finish that, you can go ahead and publish your listing and it'll actually go live right away. And then after you've published your listing, there's actually so many more settings that you can put into your listing. And Turo will kind of walk you through it. Um, this looks like their site is lagging right now. But once that page does load, you're gonna see the next page from here. They'll kind of show you all the different options for your settings. And by different options, I mean, you know, different airports that you're willing to deliver to, or, um, you know, different, if you wanna set up your pickup time and return hours, meaning, you know, if you only want people renting from you from like 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every single day, and you don't accept rentals before or after then. Um, again, as I mentioned, delivery in airports, your trip preferences. So trip preferences has different things, um, such as book instantly, which is an amazing setting. So. If you're able to, if your schedule permits, you want to have Book Instantly because Book Instantly uh, listings rank higher than other listings. Again, it's that instant gratification factor, that easy factor to where you don't have to approve a rental. So there's two ways where people can rent. Either you allow for Book Instantly, which means that on our end as a host, we don't get to look at the reservation beforehand and say, oh yeah, I want to rent to this person or no, I don't want to rent or the car is not available or whatever it might be. And then the other way is if you don't have your listing on book instantly, then people have to request to book and then you get to look at the reservation and the timing and their message to you and then you get to decide, okay, I want to list it or I don't want to list it. And then again, there's you know a few other um, Settings here like advance notice, again, that's setting the time. If you offer airports or a guest chosen location, then you can put um, a time block there. So the time blocks all look the same and the long-term trips. Um, and then just on that note, the only thing that I wanna add is that, you know, when you are getting ready to list your car, you wanna be super serious about it. Do it when you are truly, truly ready because what happens is every time a new listing comes onto the platform, um, Turo will rank you very high because they wanna give everyone a fair chance to have their cars get rented out. And so if you list your car and you get that first rental you know, within the first few days, but you're declining your rentals and you're canceling on them, then that tells the Turo marketplace, hey, this person is not exactly serious about offering up their vehicle to our marketplace, so we're gonna start dropping their rankings. So now when people search for cars, your car is gonna drop lower and lower and lower and lower on the totem pole, and it's gonna be harder and harder to get uh, rentals because you're competing against people like me who you know I have cars that are readily available I don't decline rentals and things like that so you got to keep your listing in good standing so that's really important and you know as you build out your fleet this is what your your black uh, back end is gonna look like so it's pretty cool you know it's pretty cool to start with one car and you know now I have 10 um, as a part of my my fleet at the moment so hope this video helps for those of you thinking about listing your car just go ahead and do it already it's such an awesome marketplace to be a part of and you know I just can't 
recommend it enough as an additional way of making money or even doing it as a full-time gig.